مسؤولة مسؤولة الوفاي في عنا 25 هدار نعتبره خط أحمر نحن ما حدا يلعب معه Good afternoon on this Friday, January 3rd. I'm Yimna Naufal and these are today's headlines. Lebanese authorities try to determine if a suicide bomber is behind the Hadid Hade car bomb blast that left at least four people killed. Danish and Norwegian vessels leave Cyprus and head towards Syria to score a delayed shipment of chemical weapons for destruction. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry launches a second day of talks with Israelis and Palestinians seeking to hammer out a framework to guide negotiations. Lebanese authorities are trying to determine whether a 19-year-old man from North Lebanon is the suicide bomber behind the Beirut suburb car bomb blast a day earlier that left at least four people killed. Security sources told the Daily Star that an identification document belonging to Qutayba Muhammad al-Satim from the Akkar region of Wadi Khalid in North Lebanon was found among the debris of shops and cars destroyed by the 4.15 p.m. attack in Hara Tahrik. Meanwhile, DNA tests are being conducted on the victims of Thursday's car bombing, the sources added, including human remains found at the crime scene. Authorities pulled Thursday an upper part of what is thought to be the body of the alleged suicide bomber and some features of his face and head. Caretaker Interior Minister Marwan Sharbil said human remains inside the vehicle used in the explosion suggested a suicide bomber may have been involved. The United States, Saudi Arabia and Iran are condemning in separate statements Thursday's deadly bombing that targeted Beirut's southern suburbs. Iran's foreign ministry described the blast in Har Tahrik, a neighborhood of the Beirut suburb, as a terrorist attack and said the Lebanese people would confront the Zionist plot in their country. Yad also condemned the attack, describing it as a criminal act and offered its condolences to the families of the victims. Saudi ambassador to Lebanon Ali Awad Asiri said in a statement that terrorism is the same everywhere and the most effective way to counter it is to build a Lebanese national understanding. This comes as DNA tests confirmed the identity of a Saudi national in the custody of Lebanese authorities is that of Majid al-Majid, the head of an al-Qaeda offshoot that claimed responsibility for last year's deadly bombings outside the Iranian embassy on November 19. Joining us now to discuss the latest events in Lebanon is political analyst Karol Malouf. Can you hear me, Karol? Can you Hello? hear me, Carol? Yes, yes, I'm here. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Carol, after what happened yesterday and last week with the assassination of former Minister Mohammed Shatta, what do you make of all of this? Uh, we have seen uh, the tit-for-tat bombings uh, taking place uh, uh, since mid-2013. If you remember, there was the Ruiz uh, bombing in uh, Beirut's southern suburbs, known as Dahye, and then we saw the bombings uh, in Tripoli after that. And now we see something very similar. There's a bomb targeting uh, Dr. Mohammed Sata from the March 14 camp, uh, versus uh, another bombing a few days later in uh, in, uh, in Dahya again. So this uh, this uh, tit for tat, if you want, uh, uh, is uh, is increasing, and uh, everybody now is worried that uh, uh, escalations in uh, in those types of bombings might uh, might occur uh, in the coming few weeks. So people are afraid that this is what's going to happen. And do you think that it is? what everybody is saying on the record, that it's because of Hezbollah's direct involvement in the Syrian conflict? Uh, I believe uh, dragging Lebanon through Hezbollah's involvement in Syria uh, has been a major uh, key in, uh, in uh, if, you if you want, uh, importing the Syrian problem to Lebanon. I don't believe it's only a spillover, but we have actually imported the problem uh, to Lebanon. There's a, there's a group uh, of uh, in the Lebanese society, predominantly, if you want, uh, the Sunnis, if we're allowed to talk in sectarian terms, feel uh, disenfranchised by, by what is happening on the political level. 
uh, and uh, extreme uh, uh, positions might be taken from, from some of them. We, we are not saying that this has been caused uh, specifically uh, by uh, the Sunni extremists, but however, this is a perception, and as you know, uh, uh, Yumna perception is reality. So uh, a certain uh, a big segment of the Lebanese population feel that they have been disenfranchised uh, uh, politically. Uh, today the country has uh, a paralyzed parliament. We have uh, a caretaker government that is unable to, uh, to take things into their own hands. And uh, we are uh, approaching the, uh, the, the presidential election soon. Uh, it is perceived that a group uh, which is uh, Hezbollah and their uh, allies and supporters are taking control of the country uh, politically uh, and at the security level as well. So uh, you would uh, hear a lot of this talk uh, among Lebanese. Now, uh, we have to wait for... Um the uh, you know the investigations to be able to uh, to point the finger, but uh, but this is the general mood in the country today. Speaking of pointing fingers, as I said earlier, now every single part of Lebanon and every single party seems to be hit. I don't know if you heard. You know, DNA test today confirmed that an identity of a Saudi national named Majid al-Majid is the responsible person behind the Iranian embassy attack back in November. So, who's safe anymore? Uh, nobody is safe. You see, uh, when, when you drag the Lebanese, uh, the, the whole, the, all of Lebanon, into a neighboring uh, problem, which is the Syrian crisis, you're not only uh, claiming to defend a certain part of the Lebanese population, however, you are implicating the other part of the Lebanese population in that problem. So uh, today, uh, I think the best thing to do to get out of this uh, uh, cycle of violence is to, uh, to call on the parties to, uh, to abide by the Baabda Declaration. And as uh, uh, Dr. Shatah, before he was assassinated, wrote in an open letter to Tehran, to, uh, to uh, President Rouhani, he called on the Lebanese uh, uh, state to, uh, to, uh, to go to the Security Council and call for neutrality. Uh, if we are able to, uh, to uh, call on Lebanon to become a neutral state, then we would not be uh, implicated in any regional conflict. And it's the only way to, uh, to safeguard whatever we have left in, in the unity, because you also hear a lot of talk about, you know, disintegration and the uh, different parties fighting against each other. So if we do not rise above these differences and try to find a political uh, and probably an international solution to the Absolutely. Lebanese, question today exactly but probably the, the the question today the Lebanese question needs an international resolution mm -hmm. and not just a local one because as we see the parties are unable to sit together around the, around the dialogue table and uh, talk to each other all right well thank you so much for joining us today that was political analyst Karol Malouf commenting on the latest bombings that have rocked the country just yesterday and a week prior Danish and Norwegian vessels left the Cypriot port of Limassol and headed towards Syria to escort a delayed shipment of chemical weapons for destruction. The ships are to be joined by Chinese and Russian vessels inside Syrian waters under a plan agreed in Moscow on Friday. The removal had been scheduled to take place before December 31st, but the deadline passed and a new one has not yet been set. The year-end deadline for the removal of key weapons components is the first major milestone under a U.N. Security council back deal arranged by Russia and the United States that aims to eliminate all of Syria's chemical arms by the middle of this year. Syria's worsening civil war, logistical problems and bad weather had held up the operation to move the chemical agents to the port of Latakia, according to a U.N. organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons, which is the mission overseeing the operation. Coming up next, skin tightening by electrical stimulation, one of the latest trends in Hollywood for people trying to stay looking young without going under the knife. Stay with us. Welcome back. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry launched a second day of talks with Israelis and Palestinians seeking to hammer out a framework to guide negotiations towards a peace deal. 
American officials have privately said they believe the direct talks resumed in July after a three-year hiatus have reached a new phase as an April deadline for an accord looms but are struggling to overcome fierce opposition from both sides to any compromises. Kerry returned to Israel on Thursday for his 10th trip as Secretary of State and went straight into five hours of meetings with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The top U.S. diplomat is expected to head to Ramallah for discussions with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas at his headquarters in the occupied West Bank. Preparations have begun for the state funeral of the critically ill former Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon. Dr. Ziv Rothstein, director of Tel Hashomer Hospital in Tel Aviv, said that Sharon's health had deteriorated during the past two days and vital organs were suffering from a critical malfunction. Sharon had made it clear that he preferred to be buried at his Negev home, Sycamore Ranch, next to his late wife Lily, and not in the traditional gravesite for former Prime Ministers on Mount Herzl in the capital. The newspaper, which is the Jerusalem Post, reported that the Prime Minister's office would handle arrangements for a funeral together with Sharon's sons, Gilad and Omri, who were at their father's hospital bedside. It was the first official medical statement on Sharon's health after reports on Wednesday said he had suffered a kidney malfunction. Sharon had a stroke on January 4, 2006, slipping into a coma from which he has yet not recovered. Al-Qaeda-linked militants advanced into new areas of one major Iraqi city as part of another remained outside the control of security forces. Districts of Ramadi and Fallujah, west of Baghdad, have been held by militants for days, hearkening back to the years after the 2003 U.S.-led invasion when both cities in Anbar province were insurgent strongholds. Fighters from the Al-Qaeda-linked Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant advanced in early morning clashes into areas in central Ramadi and deployed snipers on one street. Clashes erupted in the Ramadi area on Monday as security forces tore down the country's main anti-government protest camp. The site was one of several that sprung after Sunni Arabs began protesting in late 2012, condemning what they called the marginalization of their minority community and its unfair targeting and heavy-handed security forces tactics. United Nations Humanitarian Chief Valerie Amos said that some 194,000 South Sudanese had been driven from their homes by the violence and more than 57,000 were under protection at UN peacekeeping bases. Speaking in New York, she also commented on the ongoing unrest in Central African Republic, saying that more than 800,000 people had been internally displaced and nearly half a million were facing hunger. The first winter storm of the year has blanketed the Midwestern U.S. in snow, bringing municipal services to a halt and grounding flights. Illinois received six inches of more snow and severe wind chills, prompting hundreds of flight cancellations in and out of Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. Up 12 inches of snow has been forecast for some areas overnight on Thursday and into Friday, and temperatures could plummet to as low as just above zero. Boston could see as much as 14 inches of snow, and New York City, 3 to 7 inches. The National Weather Service has issued a blizzard warning for Long Island from Thursday evening into Friday afternoon. The worst of the storm is expected to hit later today with bitter cold temperatures. By our reaction, this is billed as a non-invasive radiofrequency treatment for skin tightening, body contouring, and cellulite reduction, and making waves in Hollywood as the latest gadget in the war against anti-aging. Also proving popular is Oxylite by Sapphire 3, a non-invasive lead light energy and oxygen device that practitioners claim provides skin rejuvenation. Now as time goes on, collagen production in the skin slows, resulting in wrinkles and sagging skin, but Voyora claims to stimulate collagen production as it uses multi-frequency channeling that works with vacuum therapy to provide targeted precision for the technician. Doctors who use Viora Reaction say it's a useful device because the same machine can be used on the face, chin, neck, and cell light, and all without the touch of a knife. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our top stories. Lebanese authorities try to determine if a suicide bomber was behind the Hadid Tehrik car bomb blast that left at least four people killed yesterday. Danish and Norwegian vessels leave Cyprus and head towards Syria to escort a delayed shipment of chemical weapons for destruction. And U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry launches a second day of talks with Israelis and Palestinians seeking to hammer out a framework to guide negotiations. Thank you for joining us live on Future Television. I'm Yumna Nofa, live in Beirut, saying good night. <laughs> Oh,
حكومة مسؤولة وفاعية في عندنا 25 هزار نعتبره خط أحمر نحن ما حدا يلعبنا